Right, hi everyone, this is another video explaining the way we're going to get a heat pump in our property even though we're in a solid walled. You can see it just here, uh, the end on bricks. We're a solid walled, solid brick uh, Victorian terrace property with a rear extension and a lean to put on. Um, so I'll just walk you through some of the uh, variables that are involved in this house. Um, and we'll see if we're going to go for it. Um, yet to be determined. So this here's what I made earlier. Hi everyone. I've just had um, a heating engineer from a local heat geek company um, who've quoted me for an SLC pump. And so the plan is, you can see where the boiler flue is up here in the uh, rear extension bathroom. I think it was built from new. I think it. And just a little interruption to show you where it was, and ideally where we might put. Um, the cylinder but we don't think we have enough room so this space in between the toilet and the end of the bath that's not pictured is uh, about 700 mil by 600 mil so 60 centimeters by 70 centimeters we could maybe get some line um, cylinder in there but um, we've decided that downstairs might make more sense um, so we yeah, are going back to the video this solid wall though actually it's not so clear from the brickwork um, so it might be unfilled cavity, not 100% sure. Uh, but the heat pump is proposed to go here where these planters are. We'll have to remove those of course. And then we can get the condenser drained straight down in here. Um, didn't quite have the clearances here because uh, these don't open. But uh, unless we screwed them in, you'd have to have uh, 1.5 meters away from the door to have a propane heat pump. Um, and they an interesting thing about propane heat pumps, uh, the heating engineer told me that the heat pump's only got about 9 grams of refrigerant or propane in it. Um, so 9 grams what matchbox worth or something, absolutely nothing. Uh, whereas in our uh, uh, roof, or at least the converted attic room, um, we've got some camping gas for our stove when we go camping. And it's only tiny little discs, uh, CV300s they're called, um, and they've got 240 grams of a mix of butane and propane. So clearly a bigger fire hazard is allowed and is regulated to be in my home, but um, is not allowed to be within one meter of the outside. And so, absolutely crazy. We fit in valence. Um, but where we could have the cylinder is directly through here, so it makes so much sense to just have it here. So this is the new utility room. Uh, this actually was a silly idea that we got we got a garden done by Your Garden Made Perfect by the BBC and these uh, drain pipes were um, a silly idea. We thought, well, we could grow some food there. They could have like little micro herbs or uh, these are thyme plants, etc. <laughs> but actually they're so shallow that you know, basically nothing grows. We've got some sedums in there and stuff and some of the thyme does okay if I remember to water it, but it's, it's basically useless and pointless, so we don't mind getting rid of that. Where the washer is, etc. So uh, we could have. Once they get the so, and this is where we embarrass ourselves with how messy our lean to extension is. Uh, we've actually got rid of this rug, uh, thank, thank goodness. But um, yeah, washing machine, hopefully dryer, loads of nonsense there, loads of sort of DIY stuff that we can get rid of. This is full of paint that we don't need. Um, we have the washing stuff and the cat food stuff down here. But yeah, this could be where the cylinder goes. Maybe we'll move the washing machine over to the side. I could go on the top, we'll get you new units as they're kind of broken anyway. Uh, but this is a good option for where the um, cylinder expansion vessel uh, and initial ingress of the pipework comes in. Right, we're resumed again. Anyway, take off the primaries up to the boiler uh, here. Um, and because we'll have around a 10 kilo heat box, then uh, we should be able to run it through our 22mm primaries because we'll have one 22 coming down to the ground floor and doing that separately and another 22 going up to the middle and top floor and so we've got a 5 kilo heat loss here Right, so let me just get something up that explains what I'm talking about here and without being 100% jarring at all, here we are on the Heat Geek website with their heat, uh, cheat sheet for pump size. So um, what I talked about in another video is that um, heat pumps and boilers work off different theories. So a boiler wants to drop 20 degrees or a DT of 20 um, and will have a, uh, can have a lower flow rate. And so you can put in loads of heat, you can put in like 45 uh, kilowatts of heat through a 35 mil pipework if you're going to drop 15 degrees, if you put that to 20, even more. So that means 
gas boilers can send loads of heat through even narrow pipes um, because they're dropping so much different the, the difference in change in temperature of the water allows them to put loads of heat out of the water it, through through your radar into your house um, and heat pumps work by sending a lot more water um, but with a lower change in temperature because they the heat exchanger and the back end of the heat pump work better with a smaller change in temperature. Um, and so we've got 22 mil pipe work, which means we could put six kilowatts through that. Um, and so if we had one pipe work run uh, going through the whole house, we could drop six kilowatts of heat through that 22 mils, which is not enough. So that's not great. Um, but um, what you could do is uh, if you have one of it going up into the uh, top of the house, so if, you, if you've got well, one existing pipe work and if you tee off in the middle of it and you have six kilowatts going up to the top and six kilowatts coming down to the bottom, you've got enough for a DT of, uh, sorry, you've got enough for a, um, a heat loss of 10, 12 kilowatts easily. So it just about does it. So that's why we can use our existing pipe work without having to upgrade it because hopefully you've got 22s going up and we've got 22s going down um, and we'll have to do some exploration work to make sure that works and we're back and hopefully that wasn't which is high end on the other floors because of the uh, because of the suspended ground floor um, and this is the, the middle is only two and the top's only two so adding up to uh, nine or ten and so um, because the suspended floor means that you leak heat out into the void underneath and that's not connected to another floor. So this uh, top room will be leaking heat into the bottom of the house, but that's useful, that's fine, um, because that's within your house, so it doesn't matter. Uh, and same for the attic. Um, if the attic leaks some heat down into the middle of the house, great, no problem. Um, obviously most heat leaks upwards. Uh, but this if the, this is a suspended floor, it's got air vents, etc. so you've got a cross flow of air and it'd be sucking heat out into the street. Uh, which is why, the, although the footprint's not much bigger at the bottom floor, um, the rest of it is. Um, uh, you, you're losing more water to the outside. Kilowatts. Um, so that's great. So I'll see you back in the office and I'll explain some of the pictures and what we'll have to do to make the chip. Right, so we're back in the office. Hello, hi, we're in the office. Great. Um, and this is some of the pipework trunking that we've got within the house already. So, I mean, we painted the wallpaper. This is kind of like Victorian-esque wallpaper with a pattern on. Um, and we chose those kind of a bottle green. But this is just pipe uh, trunking for a pipework. So um, what we think is this is 22s looking at... Um, uh, what we can see downstairs and so this is what the exploration uh, exploration work we will need uh, to make sure that that's the case and that we don't need to do any extra work because you can see this uh, antico flooring means that it's not easy to lift that because it's down on scree and then underneath it's plywood so you can't just roll up a carpet uh, <laughs> uh, take off a floorboard and then put extra pipe work in so easily so hopefully this is all 22s although you can cope with a bit lower um, so yeah, so where else have we got trunking? Here we go. So this is on the this is the uh, the half landing uh, in between the bathroom, and so this is where a lot of the pipe work will come out uh, at this level. Um, and then it'll, some of it's coming down, some of it's coming under here, and around to here, and then it's going up in the house up to the top floor here. So if that's tw if uh, if uh, ooh, let's go back. Uh, so if the twenty two is coming out here. Um, and then some are going into the um, the office, right where I am here. So this should be going into this room right here, right behind uh, uh, this wardrobe. Um, then we should be able to get the whole floor heated on a 22 primary. Wonderful. Great, because we don't have a 6 kilowatt loss here. So it'll be more than enough for that at the right speeds. And then perhaps these are 22s going up. How little could we cope with is something to look at. So let's get the, uh, did I close the heat geek website completely? Yes, I did, silly me. Uh, so one jarring pause. And we're back, and that wasn't jarring at all. And this is quality editing, of course. Um, so if we're only going upstairs and that uh, only has a um, two kilowatt heat loss, if they're 15s, that's probably fine. Um, and so we shouldn't have too much worry about that. So wonderful, that's great. Um, that's that explained. Let's go back. Three, two, one. Oh, let's press the pause and not.
And we're back. And that wasn't jarring at all, but I haven't really <laughs> saved myself. Um, so anyway, this is the dining room. This is the sort of rear extension. And so some of that pipe work on the landing here will come down into here, and it comes into the understairs cupboard, comes into the meter cupboard down here. And this is where we've spotted that there are definitely 22s coming down here, and then they tee off and go around the bottom of the floor. So uh, our um, sizing requirements are fine, so if they, we definitely know that it is 22s coming down, so we could use a DT of 5 at 9 uh, meters per second, and that should provide up to a 6 kilo heat loss, which is great, because if you initially look at this, you might think that, oh, we've got a 12 kilo uh, heat pump being proposed, um, you've only got 22 mil pipework, you're not going to be able to do that without going to a DT of 10, and you need a buffer, and then your um, um, your efficiency might drop and you might not get your scope of 3.6 to um, break even with gas prices. Um, but it looks like that's not going to be the case and we're going to be okay. Smashing. One of the other things we did talk about though is that um, if we do need to change or look at any of the pipe work we might have to take part of this ceiling down and this is the trunking that's uh, coming down into the uh, Going uh, down from the bathroom right where the boiler is, this might be a flow and return for the heating, or it might be, or we think that's actually over here in the meter. We think that's over, actually over here in the meter. This is the, the trunking here. Um, this might be the um, hot and cold water for the taps. Um, but if we could use this trunking to get up to the boiler, that might be useful, and they might have to do a bit of a seam repair. So that's something to bear in mind. But I would go with a bit of description. Um, I've just got to convince the missus, really, rather than anything else. One of the things you do is you do a room by room heat loss. So this is our bathroom. We've got a towel towel rail behind here. They don't have any heat, but it'd be a little bit difficult for us to take a flow and return and put an extra one in behind the the little cupboard. We have for towels, etc. Um, and so what you can do is you can oversize the next door room so we can oversize some of the other attic rooms and you know if you leave the door open or if you just have the heating on all the time these things will sort of even out um, so that's one thing you can bear in mind on your heat loss survey for example this is the room next door which is our undecorated room since we moved in apart from doing the flooring um, and we use it for washing and de and we've got a dehumidifier so we don't um, choke up with uh, condensation everywhere um, and you can see this radiator here um, so this is part of the ones we propose to change it's just going to be wider it's a single panel no convector it's going to go to a double i don't think these are going to be triples i think these are going to be doubles um but i'd you know, be happy with a triple because the width doesn't matter here at all because um can't really stand uh, unless you're by the window uh, because of the, the sort of okay, the, the eaves of the roof, for example. Um, so let's move on, move on to the next room like magic, and you can see it, again this is um, uh, the radiator in my daughter's eldest daughter's room, and uh, yeah, this is going to be upgraded to a K3, and it has to be a little wider, but makes no difference to us whatsoever. I'm very much happy to have bigger radiators. Some people make a fuss. Don't know why. This is where the magic happens. This <laughs> this is this is the office that my wife works in. This is our home office. This is the bike we bought to try and keep fit, but don't use a lot. And there's a radiator behind here. It gets a little tight with making that bigger with this uh, thing. We could get that. Uh, we could get our electrician to move that a little bit so that we can help this be wider and keep us warm enough in this room. And it'll be cheaper, four times cheaper, for us to keep uh, my wife warm with the heat pump than it is using this electrical valve radio. Because often we'd leave the house cold and freezing, um, and then she'd use this to keep warm. Uh, but that is, uh, you know, this room would be boiling, and then you'd step out and you'd be freezing. So it's a bit of a waste of time, if you ask me, and that's why we're really looking forward to getting a heat pump. And that's how I'm going to try and convince her to get one. Oh, I thought I paused it earlier. Oh, whoops. Anyway, and, and again, um, this is the bedroom. Um, this is a single panel radiator. We've now got a double, pan, uh, double glazed sash, or, you know, this wouldn't have been new. It would have been single pane uh, wood, um, and so it retains a lot more heat. And so uh, we could have a radiator that's a little bit wider, but it's a K3, uh, and that would hang off the, the solid walls absolutely fine. It wouldn't be a problem for the floor. Um, and uh, you sorry about the mess, we, I was just about to tidy up, but my wife does keep all her books here for some reason. Uh, we had a leak in the roof 
which we fixed and had to get a new roof um, and had it all insulated. Um, so our heat loss is reduced and uh, yeah, this is the remnants of the leaking roof. Whoops. And this is another example of all the single panel radiators that just simply don't heat the house. Even if you get the flow temperature to 50 or 60, it takes forever to warm up because these put out not on feet. Um, and you can see our sort of porch area, single glazing. It's all nice and Victorian and things and nice corner sink, etc. Um, but it doesn't half leak heat, uh, especially through a wooden door with single panel as well. It's a bit drafty. Uh, that I've tried to seal up a bit, but uh, really looking forward to having a much warmer house with nice double panelled, double convection radiators uh, to get us going. Uh, so this is another video I made um, just while I was plodding about the other day on my day off, um, all about um, the EPC or the heat loss survey that we had um, and the expected heat demand and things like that. So um, I'm going to play a little bit of it and walk you through and pause uh, for any details uh, that might come up. Um, it's a little bit boring because you're just looking at this here, but I do talk a lot of sense during it, I hope. Um, and so let's try and get the volume right to begin with and see how we go. Um, and we've got it on HD, so hopefully it comes out all through the mill and looks okay. All right, so let's start it. Hi everyone, I've had a heat loss survey for my house. Thinking about getting a heat pump. This is the heat engineer software. Um, report from my house is space heating um, based on uh, what the what I put in here the house is made of his measurements and calculations and the MCS process. So my uh, we zoom in a little bit here. Yeah, so space heating, my uh, space heating requirements would be 23,000 kilowatt hours a year or 23 megawatt hours. Work. And, and this is interesting actually because if I get my octopus up. Um, which I think I do later in this, um, my smart gas meter is only quoting as is using 4 megawatt hours or 4,000 kilowatt hours, uh, which is a huge discrepancy. And I had problems the year before with my electrical smart meter not working. So it's possible that my um, smart gas meter is not working this year because um, previously we've used 11 and then 15 uh, megawatt hours in the last two years before that. Um, so when gas was cheap, we used about 15. So a little uh, less frugal, uh, but then when gas quadrupled, uh, quintupled, quintupled in price, I was worried about what everything would cost, and we re we reduced just through um, coping being cold, where they actually jump uh, using blankets, etc., from 15 to 11, and I can remember that off the top of my head, and I think it's right, but could be wrong. Um, but yeah, currently this year I've only used four, which is definitely wrong. Predicting the design temperature of the heat pump that we could get a SCOP coefficient of a performance, so a ratio between um, how much electrical energy you need to put in versus how much heat energy you get out. And that's because that's what the fans and the coils are all about, that's what the outdoor unit does, that's what heat pump does. It uses one unit of electricity to fire a condenser. And this condenser or compressor um, basically squashes the gas and gets some heat out of it and then it also expands it and cools things. So it cools outside, it takes that heat energy within this uh, refrigerant gas, this propane, pumps it into your house, and then you've got a heat exchanger uh, to put that into water, and that water goes all around your house. So that's basically what's happening, a little bit of the physics of a heat pump, if that's an okay explanation, probably not. But that's how you can basically get more than one unit of heat out of the electricity, because direct electricity is, what, four times more? Um, gas is 100% efficient, so you do lose some, so the break-even point's about 3.6, so a 4.21 you would save money versus gas. Uh, because you're scavenging from the atmosphere, uh, this is 4.21, so for every one unit of electricity you put in, and that's just me doing another explanation. I think this time was better, so we'll skip that. And I'll just talk over a few of all these numbers. So to produce 23.25 megawatt hours of um, heat that we demand, it will use 5.5 5 .5, uh, megawatt hours of electricity. Um, and so I go through how much that might cost. So why don't we do a little pause and I'll get the maths up. 
Right, so hi everyone, this is the cost comparison for what it would cost um, if I managed to shift everything to my off-peak tariff, which is Octopus Intelligent, which I can't do fully, but we might be able to get a lot of it. Um, this is what it'd be at price cap, um, this is what it'd be with gas, so let's have a look at the numbers then. So, the heat survey says that the heat demand to try and keep my house at 21 for all the time we want it on, because uh, we don't want it on overnight necessarily, uh, would be... 23,000 kilowatt hours, so that's what this number here is, 23.251 kilowatt hours or 23.25 megawatt hours. Um, so, um, with a scope of 4.1 or 4.2, 4.2, 4.21, I would need 5,500 kilowatt hours of electricity, and if I'm paying price cap for that, so 5,523 5, times by 24.5 pence, um, means that my annual running cost now would be £1,353. Um, whereas if I wanted to deliver 23,000 kilowatt hours of heat into the house, I would have to burn 27,000 kilowatt hours of gas because the hot flu, I don't have a condensing boiler, we don't have radiators that could um, output enough heat at a lower flow temperature to condense with a condensing boiler. I'd have to change the radiators anyway. Um, so a lot of these things about heat pumps, oh you need to upgrade your radiators and you do this or that or other. Well you kind of benefit from doing that anyway. You'd save a lot of money spending 23,000, <laughs> spending money on uh, 23 megawatt hours of gas than you would on 27. That's a that's a reasonable saving that you could do by upgrading your radiators anyway. So um, you you know to get these high efficiency gas boilers, you actually got to change some of your heating system anyway. Um, but anyway, besides the point. So if I'm paying six pence, this is a price cap for gas. Um, so 6.24 pence for gas, I would spend 1,700 pounds on keeping the house at 21 degrees all year round, which ain't too bad, is it? But if I do manage to offset quite a lot of my electricity use, or if I have a battery big enough to deliver that heat, um, then I could potentially get my bill down to only 386 to heat this house. And given that it's quite a large five bedroom Victorian house that's quite inefficient, um, that would be absolutely stunning, wouldn't it? So if you get a battery big enough for that sort of thing, um, or um, if you can use the car intelligently. So if I, I'm doing a lot of miles anyway, so if I'm plugging in uh, with Octopus, uh, plugging my car in every night, asking for a full battery, and then using that to do all my hot water, etc. Um, so actually this spreadsheet is only for heating the house, so we can put hot water in as well. So three, two, one. Oh, don't miss it. Oh, getting it wrong. And we're back. Another cheesy transition. I'm um, getting the hang of this YouTube thing. Not. Um, but put the domestic hot water up. Um, sorry, I haven't put this in a nice, easy on your eyes colour, have I? Right, let's get that up quickly. Oh, it's not even displaying. Silly me. Right, back. That's better. Wow. Super smooth, Lewis. Amazing. So apparently I watch a lot of um, Dragon Ball Z, and that's TM. Uh, but let's get this a bit bigger for you all. Right, great. So, how much would it cost? So, heating with gas would cost 1700 Um Hot water would cost 400, so that's 2,132 pounds. Uh, whereas heating with a heat pump and hot water at price cap would be 1,350 plus 386, so 1,700 and something. Uh, but if we um, if we add the off peak, we could easily do all our hot water off peak. That would be only be 110, so that'd be 1,464 pence. Uh, 64 pounds, um, so that's pretty good. Um, I think it's an absolute unrealistic dream for the heating to the heating and hot water to only be 500 pounds. Um, I think this is a gross overestimate of how much electricity we'd use because um, we use about five kilowatt hours per day of um, hot water, whereas the if you if you do the uh, naked calculations of needing 6,000. Um, so 6,000, let's just do that for us, so 6,000 divided by 365, um, not pounds, it should be 16, so let's get currency off there, that is not currency, you are just a number, um, so 16 kilowatt hours a day, that's three times more than we actually use, 
Um, so actually, I think divide uh, all of these by three um, for what might be more realistic. So uh, we could get our heating bill of the heat pump down super low with a great um, quality um, heat pump installation from my local heat geek. So as you can tell, I'm quite chuffed with this. I'm very excited. Um, if you want to see other uh, really good explanations of how low you could get uh, prices, what I'll suggest is we should show you the EV Man. Uh, let's get it up. YouTube EVM heat pump costs. I've actually got this saved up on complete running cost in depth edition. This is the one that you want. Um, oh god, right, I'm gonna have to skip all the ads, aren't I? Right, so let's pause it. So I'd really recommend this video. Uh, so let's get me out of the way a wee bit, and I'll show you uh, some of uh, some of um, EVM's stuff. So get me a bit smaller. Um, so I would really search for this. Um, so I need to fix this a little bit, don't I? Right, so get a bit smaller. There you go. We're filling in. So you want to search for EVM and you want to ask for heat pump one year complete running costs in depth edition um, and he, looks, he gets his whiteboard up so running costs starts talking about it here so very what similar to what I've been talking college. about go and watch that one but very briefly this house um, for the heat pump it costs us about four and a half thousand pounds more than it would have done for a new gas boiler so we had a failing gas boiler and we needed something new uh, mine's a lot different actually because I've got a um, much higher heat loss and I need much more radiator changes and things and it's a much more difficult job than his was because he lives in a new modern house uh, with very low heat loss and so his system is just a lot smaller and needs a lot less work than mine does. Um, and he hasn't got his spreadsheet up here so perhaps this is not the perfect one. Let's see what he says. The well, this behind me. The Give Energy Home Battery System so he's got and the solar panels although they don't do He's got a home uh, battery system. He's got two all-in-ones here, and he's, he started working for Give Energy now. So um, uh, he's kind of bought into that for a while, and so all his heat pump energy can be from his solar panels or imported off-peak, and so he only pays 7p. So he's got 26 kilowatt hours of batteries here, um, and some inefficiencies. So you, you might have to pay 30 kilowatt hours to fill those 26 or something, because um, you do lose some. The batteries aren't perfect. Um, that much in winter for us we haven't got a great array uh, and the time of day tariff of course if we didn't have the home battery in the solar system then it, i figured out it's about the same it would have cost us the same to run the heat pump as it would do the gas boiler would have cost us four and a half grand more to install uh, whereas my calculations show you that i would have been saving money so um so um, he must talk about it in another video but just go look at one of his or on my channel I've got some playlists uh, and look for the uh, heat pump examples playlist um, and here's where he explains it properly I thought he had his whiteboard and his, um, his price uh, uh, prices put on it uh, but it's not this video it's one of the one of his others uh, but anyway so we're using it fair use so I'm not uh, just cannibalizing um, I think he's Andy isn't he uh, but I'm not so I'm cannibalizing his content too much we'll stop it there um, but I'd really recommend that. There's other great people on YouTube who've explained heat pumps really well. There's, um, ooh, what's the fork guy called? <laughs> uh, upside Down Fork, uh, Ricky Watts. Um, yeah, so he's got some great content on heat pumps and his British gas heat pump. Um, uh, so he's got a higher flow temperature, I think, than we do. Um, and he paid a lot less because he's got a... Um, lower heat loss property too uh, and so if you're in a lower heat loss property don't be scared by the fact that you know my quotes quite a lot um of money even with the grant um but bigger than average house with bigger than average costs and, and, and changes needed you can from octopus get a, a heat pump for um, up to as less as uh, as little as 500 quid if you're in a smaller heat loss property um so there's lots of options there Okay, well this is one of the longest videos I've ever done, we're at 28 minutes, so I'll call it a day, like, comment, subscribe, if you've got any um, questions about heat loss, uh, heat loss surveys, uh, I don't know, our property, um, or um, whether you should get a heat pump, then ask away, we'll have a chat, can't say I'm a complete expert or anything, but um, I've done a lot of research and things, so I could point you in the direction of the right things to do. Other examples, Tom Bray, Tom Bray, um, uh, also has a valent heat pump, he's got a great YouTube uh, channel, so I'll try and put a link in to his stuff too, um, as well as you know, basically everyone in um, everyone
everyone in my heat pump videos. Um, Urban Plumbers, uh, Simon, he's a great heating engineer who's a heat geek from London. Um, he's done loads of content on heat pumps that he's installed and things. Um, there's Glyn Hudson, uh, there's Tristan Lee, and they're both involved with the um, Open Energy Monitor stuff uh, and you can see other people's heat pumps that have got smart tech that monitor how much heat's going in, how much electricity is used, etc, etc. And then you can um, see what their running costs would be like and what their property is like and compare that to what your property's property is, um, etc. So yeah, anyway, heat pumps are the future. Um, hope you um, uh, feel like you can ask any questions um, and have got all the resources uh, for making your own mind up. Okay, everyone. Ciao. See you later. Bye.